ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my ranking of Doctor Who Season 6. The last season to feature Patrick Troughton. Uh, it was his third and last, well, second full because Season 4 he only did two, uh, he didn't do the first few stories. But anyway, so on to the ranking. We're, so let's take a look at the stories we have to rank. The Dominators, The Mind Robber, The Invasion, The Crotons, The Seeds of Death, The Space Pirates, and the war games. So without further ado, here's the list. Uh, well, that was the list, sorry. Here's the ranking. Number seven. <sighs> well, if you've seen my review, you know that this story is my least favourite story of all time, at least at the current uh, time. And that is The Space Pirates. What can I say that I haven't already said? It's fucking shit. <sighs> there we go. Reason enough? <laughs> okay, the, um, okay, a quick, a uh, little bit more. The story is awful. The character, the side characters are bad. There's only one who actually goes through development, and that's Madeline. Um, some of the characters, uh, I don't think we should need, we should have spent so much time with the Space Corps. I mean, early on, maybe, but... Uh, later on, mm, I'd rather spend more time with the Doctor and Jamie and Zoe, or at least some interesting side characters. I will say this, one thing we do, a uh, good thing about spending a lot of time with the Space Corps is we don't get to spend as much time with Milo Clancy. So more time in the Space Corps means less time in Milo Clancy. But Milo Clancy is in it so much, I'd rather he was the, ve the main villain just so that he would get less screen time. But he's a ally so he gets more screen time that's how this episode works anyway so yeah and Kevin is my least favorite character of the entire thing he's just a cunt so yeah I just I, yeah and I don't like this story and I don't think anybody does to be honest I don't think this story is a particularly fond one remembered one in the fandom it's probably why it's been forgotten as a missing story Apart from the l fact that it's the last story to have missing episodes in the show, from the War Games onwards, all the episodes survive. Uh, well, like I said, besides the unfinished bits from Sharda, uh, unfilmed bits, but all the sub all the me uh, besides that, all the made episodes are completely survive. Um, although some of the Pertwee ones are were in black and white and had to be recolorized for video and later DVD, but you know, but everything's there. Mm, so, yeah, the Space Pirates, just fucking shit. Number six. Number six is a story that's a bit better, but not much, for Dominators. Talk about starting the season on the wimp. This story isn't that interesting. It's supposed to be basing itself on the hippie movement, but it swats the gen, the ages round with... The old people being the pacifists and the young people being the radicalists, uh, or at least the ones who are eager, uh, willing to fight back, which is kind of the opposite of what it was the story uh, inspiration it was based on, with the hippie movement being more of a young person's thing and the older people being more ag agitated against uh, communists or blacks or anyone who just wasn't uh, them. Just a bit more pretentious times and a bit more radical and had uh, lived through the war periods. This was mainly in America, by the way. So they completely swapped that round. Okay, maybe it would work for if it was a better story, but the story is bad. It's a pretty poor story. The Dominators, again, really dislike them, especially this, the second in command one. He's a real jerk. I really can't stand him. The other one is okay, but he's, uh, doesn't get, he's a bit more, and he's still quite annoying. And, it's just not fun. It's not, and the quarks are the, uh, they're, not, they're not that great of a design anyway. I prefer the crotons over them, but the voices, uh, fucking hell. Strangely enough, I think the voice actress comes back. I think as the computer voice in the invasion, I think, or Seeds of Death, or something. She definitely comes back for a later story. As I think it was the computer voice in the invasion, and she was much better then. At uh, there. So, yeah, the Dominators, shit. But not as bad as the Space Pirates. Nowhere near. Well, 
near. Okay, it is near. But it's not as bad. These two are currently the worst two stories of the show at this current time. Dare I say. Uh, although there will be worse coming later on, this story, these two stories are currently my least two favourite stories of the show at this point in going in order. And overall, um, Space Pirates is. Um, everything. Not just up to this point going through the order, but everything. Space Pirates is my least favourite, and Dominators at this point in going through the order is second worst. So, moving on to number five. Thankfully, things get a bit better here. And this story was previously my... F I had this third, but I then moved it down to fifth after... Um, I, well, I swapped it with my third place. Although... Uh, my, sorry, my previous fifth place spot was swapped with my previous third place spot. Um, although not at the same time. It, um, previous third place went down to fourth, and then previous fifth went up to third. Putting the previous fourth place back. Put, uh, put third and then back down to fourth. Whoops. So previous third, but now it's fifth. Is now it is the Crotons. So the Crotons. I like this story. I know a lot of the people aren't so keen on it, but I find it good. I think it's okay. Uh, got a couple of good moments. Maybe I did. Maybe I was too positive with, with an eight out of ten. But at the time, this was. I did think I'd like this more than Seeds of Death and War Games, which are coming up later on this ranking so but um yeah maybe it does need a reschool but I still like it I think it's an interesting story this is the dominators done right uh in terms of robots oppressing innocent people and the voices and design of the protons are actually better and more threatening than the quarks and more interesting and they're actually more menacing as villains and so yeah the protons it's pretty good and this uh, story is quite interesting. Hi everyone, Nick here just to uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to change my score for the Crotons in this ranking. Uh, I originally had it at an 8 out of 10 and now I want to change it to a 7 out of 10. I did this with the Savages, I lowered it from 7 to 6 in the ranking and I put a, a bit, I wrote a little bit in the uh, description saying that it had changed and I'll do the same with this one. So yeah, I just wanted to change the score, but I still like the Crotons. I think it's a good story, and I would still place it fifth place on my ranking, considering what the scores for the other two are. Uh, two lower ones are, I should say. So, yes. Anyway, back to me. Number four. Number four is The Seeds of Death. Despite, despite the backstory of the Ice Warriors we know and, lo uh, know and love today, not being in this story, I think that must have been in the uh, Giants of the Red Planet story that Brian Hales wrote for, originally wrote and then had to change it to this one because it was less costly, it costly. But Seeds of Death manages to basically fix the problems the Ice Warriors had in, the fir in their first appearance. They are not just uh, Daleks with legs and hissing. They actually, ha they're actually good villains in this story. They, they have plans. They have, they're scheming. They're actually a good threat, and they actually do stuff. So, yeah, this story fixes the Ice Warriors, and on top of that, we also have a better supporting cast than the Ice Warriors, and actually quite like, and it's just a really well executed story. So a much better. Uh, follow up to the Ice Warriors, a uh, be much better story than the Ice Warriors was, and so a really well done sequel. Number three, number three, are probably going to be annoyed that it's not the number one or number two, but I, well, first personally, I thought this one was lower originally, but then I watched it, and I thought it was really great. I really enjoyed it. Don't know if I quite love it. I gave it a nine, so that's probably the closest it comes to love. But I do think this is a really great story, and it's a fant uh, fantastic finale. And Patrick Troughton goes on a, out on a high note, just like William Hartnell did, especially considering the stories that came before, especially this time round. And this is The War Games. Magnificent story for Patrick Troughton to go out on. Magnificent story for Theresa Hines and Wendy Pabry to leave the show in. And just a really well-executed story. 
great introduction to the Time Lords and probably the best that they're actually in because after this they either they've got prob problems during the Pertwee era and then from Tom Baker's era besides Genesis of the Daleks and possibly Brain of Morbius uh, with them sending some doctors to do some work for them uh, for both times but after that they become the bureaucratic um, bureaucrats we know them uh, mainly know them in the classic series to be uh, stuck up bureaucrats basically and more in concerned about their politics than anything else even even the observing doesn't seem to be that much of an interest anymore by the time we get to the deadly assassin and then in the new series they turn into a kind of a mix of the two uh, bureaucratic politicians fight with great power fighting this war and it's affecting them in a way so I'd like when they bring back Gallifrey and fix the problems of Hellbent which is my second least favorite of all time uh, overall um, but after fixing the problems of Hellbent, they really need to reintroduce the Time Lords like they are in the War Games, or at least pre-Deadly Assassin, with some post-Deadly Assassin elements in there. I mean, they can still be a bit stubborn and annoying and still have some of those, uh, some of the traits they had during the Time War and uh, post-Time uh, Hellbent eras. But really, I wanted to go back to how they are in this story, powerful, almost godlike, and whilst they have, they're a little bureaucratic, um, most, mostly they're just observers and powerful god, godlike creatures. So we should have something like that back in the new series next time we see the Time Lords, if that's okay with you, Chris Chibnall. Season, thank you. Uh, you don't have to do it next season, but you can do it next, you can do it in the one of your next seasons anyway. Uh, season, maybe series 13, possibly. Good time. A good time to reintroduce them, series 13, maybe. And yeah. Just whoever whoever has to write the next Gallifrey or Time Lord story has to fix Hellbent. So it's better better sooner than later, to be honest. Um, so maybe series twelve would be a good idea. So series twelve series twelve thirteen would be a great idea, Chris. Okay, cheers. Anyway, so War Games, brilliant story, really like it. And I know Jean Luc Harry, fellow Universals uh, member, this is his favourite story of all time. He even put it all on his um 100 episode tag video all of these all 10 episodes they were made up 10 percent of his ranking is his list and yeah but to be honest this is his favorite story so i'm not blaming him that's absolutely fine go ahead mate go ahead it's all yours um well yeah if you want it <laughs> um yeah go ahead save what you want basically and yeah this is your favorite story go ahead and save all of it be my guest <laughs> so there you go, the war games, and one I really, I uh, really enjoyed. Uh, I don't love it, but I really like it. Number two, this one I did love, the invasion. I found a more new, I found a new, found love for this story that I never experienced before. I did really enjoy it when I watched it the first few times round. When I got the DVD back in 2012, I think. Yeah, when I my, with my earlier Doctor Who stories uh, DVDs, I would watch quite a few of those stories, even the the terrible ones, like Monster of Peladon. I would watch them over and over again because I only had those only had a few to start with, and gradually my collection started to build and build, and now I just watch the ones that I really like. Uh, often until now with this overall marathon. Uh, watching everything from the start and the same would be said for the new series just had new series stories so I would watch those ones over and over but then with the classic ones I would mostly start watching do watch those and then with a new series when I did watch them it was usually favourites um, but yeah but still but yeah this story I really enjoyed when I was uh, 13 so I think I got it for my 13th birthday so when I was 13ish I really enjoyed it, but I didn't find this. I didn't love it as much as I did on the recent rewatch that I did for this rank, this review, uh, the review I did recently. So, yeah, the invasion. I just really enjoyed this one. Grad granted, like the war games, I mentioned this in the war games review. Uh, after halfway through, I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. I'm going to put on the rest of the story. I've got the time. So here we go. Um, but gradually, those next few episodes weren't as fun as the earlier as we had been building up to, but then again it got 
much better at the end. So there you go, it's led to 10 and 9 out of 10 st uh, stories respectively, uh, Invasion and War Games. And yeah, it's just really perfect. Uh, not perfect, but it was really good. And I think the pacing for that story, that was fine. I think that was really good. I wasn't worried it wouldn't work for the War Games, but I think 10 episodes, yeah, well, maybe it's, uh, maybe it should have been 8, but I think that pace, I think the pacing for the longer episodes actually does work, and it works better than some of the 6 and 7 parters. Um, sometimes some of the 4s and 5s. Um, I mean, the Dominators lost an episode because they didn't, the production team didn't think it would work at 6 parts, so it was cut down to 5, and an extra episode had to be put onto my number one choice, which we'll get onto in a moment, but yeah, hmm. So, even the production team will know this sometimes. So, that's it from The Invasion. That was uh, that was a really great story, and also, best two reanimated missing episodes, by the way, two, and two of the best animated Doctor Who episodes, alongside with The Power of the Daleks' six episodes, Sharda, Infinite Quest, and Scream the Shalka. Those last two ones were done by Cosgrove Hall, so they did The Invasion's two episodes. These are, this is animation-wise, by the way, not necessarily the episodes, uh, the stories themselves, but animation-wise, no, so I'll probably throw in the Ice Warriors two episodes in there as well, just because we'll see how the Macro Terrors ones do, uh, do at time recording. It's out either Monday coming up or the Monday after. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the 18th, but now it's going to be the 25th of March. So, well. But anyway, so... Invasion. Number one. Number one is, of course, the Mind Robber. This story is just imaginative and spectacular. It's so, such a great, enjoyable story and has so many great moments and such a marvellous entertainment value. Yes, some of the characters aren't original characters. They have come from other stories, but I like their use in this story, and we also get some new character, new fictional characters like the Carcass. They get to come in, to so have a bit of fun and have some good moments, and it's really enjoyable and really good, and it's got some great moments. So, yeah, the Mind Robber. It's just, it's just imaginative. It's fun. It's enjoyable, and it's really entertaining. <sighs> and. Definitely, definitely rivals Tomb of the Sidemen for the best Patrick Troughton story, but doesn't quite beat the Powder Dark, uh, not Powder Dark, uh, the Tomb of the Sidemen. I'll explain, uh, or I'll give you my full second Doctor ranking in a few minutes. Anyway, so that's it from my ranking of season six, and I'll just recap the ranking. Number seven is the Space Pirates, number six is the Dominators, number five is the Crotons, number four is the Seas of Death. Number three is the War Games, number two is the Invasion, and number one is the Mind Robber. So, thank you for watching this Season 6 ranking. I've got to do the Top 10 Second Doctor ranking, and then the Top 10 1960s Doctor Who story ranking. And then we'll be on to the Third Doctor's first story, Spearhead from Space. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>